this is the form of art in cinema that um, is not done almost anywhere. And for Laika to take it upon themselves to, to immortalize, you know, what would otherwise be a dying form of art, um, just a lot of respect goes out to them from my end, you know, and, and uh, the way the studio is set up is so organized and it's so beautiful and you feel like you're in this factory of dreamers and everybody's meticulously working on that one small detail of a thing, of a bigger thing, and they're, and they're carrying that execution with so much perfection and so much dedication and uh, it, it really felt like I was in a different world when I stepped into Laika. Lionel is this uh, cold and superficial individual that, you know, purposely, you know, intends on being a mile wide and an inch deep. Like he just never wants to go any deeper. And, and when he does go deep, uh, it's usually about his character and about his reputation. And he puts so much weight. But in reality, what he's, what that is masquerading is that he's being neglected by this, this group of people and all he ever wants is their, their approval. So, and now here you have Mr. Link who on the other side of the world, you know, almost parallel to Lionel's life he finds himself longing to to be around beings to be around people to to have conversations to fall in love to have friends um because he, he feels really really lonely Adelina, who's this character that has been kind of like stuck in limbo since her husband passed away and she feels like she's constantly living under his shadow even though he hasn't been in her life for years and uh, and by fulfilling his dream of, of going to Shangri-La um, she's able to discover her longing of just you know being being a discoverer herself you know and 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 going on her own adventures and and uh and trusting herself. The story is about, you know, longing to belong between three individuals that find themselves together on, on an unexpected journey um, and then realize that the treasure that they were looking for was always there within their friendship. When Lionel meets the Loch Ness Monster in the first scene, I mean, it's an epic action scene. And here's this stop motion character, you know, caught in an epic action scene, meeting, you know, like a, 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 an extraordinary monster. And, and um, I don't know, when I witness those moments in cinema, I feel very grateful to be a part of it. But I'm also taught and inspired to, to, keep, to keep like, you know, to keep working diligently to, to, and not settle, you know, when art uh, can be better, yeah, you to always strive for that. Working with Chris was amazing. He's so passionate. Uh, he wrote this amazing story. These characters were real to him. And usually when I was uh, coming in, you know, just to the studio and doing my voiceovers, um, I was usually acting with him and not Hugh or Zach. And honestly, it was fantastic. Because he's, uh, he's patient and he's able to go back and revisit, you know, the choices that we've made as as a, as a director and me also as an actor for for our character for Adeline for Adelina and um, and that kind of bouncing back and forth with your with your boss, you know, with your captain feels amazing when you're both aligned. That you want the story to be great, you want your characters to steal the show, you know. And and Chris is definitely a champion for the story for you, and uh, and that that felt really great. I think the lessons that are learned, you know, there's something really fantastic about your lead character being the most flawed of all the characters in the story. And, um, and that lesson that this character learns, not only is it most rewarding for that character, but it is most rewarding for you who has been living for two hours vicariously through him. And I think that Lionel Frost is a human being, is, is a character that starts 
<laughs> starts in such a place that it takes you, you know, a long time to to soften to him, you know, and and uh, and by the end of the journey, you're rooting for him and you're proud of him, you know, because you meet, you know, you you, you meet Mr. Link and you meet Adelina and you sort of go, they're perfect, they're righteous, a true and natural sense of justice, they're they they have good hearts, really clean hearts. And then there's Lionel. <laughs> so you're able to kind of balance yourself back and forth between Link and Adelina and also Lionel. I think that the reason why Adelina is so bothered by Frost is because she does know his heart. You know, she knows that he is a good person. And the fact that that, that good heart is just being weighed down by all these bad habits and this narcissism <laughs> um, really irritates her. Because I do believe that when they met, when they very first met, that they had, they had natural and super impactful chemistry. And they, they can't deny that. And um, in the same way she cannot deny her disappointment in the fact that, yes, she likes him, but he makes it really difficult for her to like him. And she feels really torn with feeling this way about him. Her relationship with Mr. Link also evolves because I think that her rigidity compels her to look at something, a creature like Mr. Link, and disregard him, you know, thinking, oh, he's, he's nothing like me, or, you know, and then to realize that Mr. Link has so much depth and so much longing and uh, that it just completely, you know, it, it melts her heart. And she's, she's immediately sold and she's on his side for everything. She takes it upon herself to, to go on this mission you know, and, and at first she thinks that it's, it's just to, you know, uh, uh, finally get to get to do something, realize something that her husband really wanted to do and never got to do. She goes from wanting, you know, going on this adventure for that to staying on the adventure because she has to find a family for Mr. Link. So, the, 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 you know, it's a very beautiful and compelling, um, uh, like, arc for her. When you see so, you know a creature that is so big, you're expecting a deep voice that sometimes may 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 haunt you or may may make you feel very conflicted to like him. But the moment he opens his mouth and it's Zach, you know Galifianakis's voice, it's it's impossible to be tense, to to be uncomfortable, or to be scared of Mr. Link. <laughs>